Hello everyone, this is the first of uh, really three lessons that I put together for you guys on energy. Uh, this one will be primarily focusing on kinetic energy, another one is on potential energy, and then the third one will be on energy conversions or transformations and energy efficiency. Um, I'll start off just by going to the data sheet and reminding you of information on your data sheet, including the unit conversion table here, helping you out with converting from one unit into another. And then of course, is all of our physics formulas that we do have here. The one that we're going to be taking a look at today is the one right at the bottom which is for kinetic energy so e k e for energy k for kinetic energy and over at the right hand side it gives us that variable symbol and it tells us the name for that symbol so e k specifically for kinetic energy and the variable units it would be joules Okay, so again, the variable name, kinetic energy, the variable symbol is the EK, and the units for it are going to be joules, which of course we've seen before because we've talked about uh, work and energy previously. Um, I'll also point out here, I will be going back and talking about a previous one that we did see, and that is this one here for work equal to force times distance briefly alluding to that. Uh, but back to our equation here, so EK is equal to one half MV squared. What is M? Well, over here, lowercase m is for mass. Units are kilograms. You need to make sure, for sure, that your units are in kilograms for any calculations. And the V is for uh, velocity or speed. So we can treat it as either in this case. So taking a look at the top here, whether it's speed or velocity, remember velocity has a direction it is a vector speed is not a vector doesn't have the arrow up above but in both cases the units are meters per second for both of those so to this uh, first slide here and again some of this of course we have seen before the previous equation here we've seen before and much of the information we've seen before when we talked about work. So energy is, yeah, the capacity to do some kind of work and work is the change in energy, energy conversions, energy transformations. And again, one of many, many examples here, if you take chemical energy, it's in fuel that you put in your car, uh, chemical energy, and it's converted into a different kind of energy. It's converted into heat energy, thermal energy, kinetic energy, the movement of the car, or mechanical energy. We have an energy transformation and some work is being done. So this we've seen before, of course, work is equal to force times distance. Uh, the big dot here means multiplication and it's really the delta D, the change in distance. And of course, work and energy kind of equivalent and especially when we talk about the uh, units for them and they are joules for both of those. So if work is equal to force times distance, work is equal to energy, and then we can also say that energy as well is equal to force times distance. So of all the different energy types, I mentioned a few of them, chemical energy, mechanical energy, um, and thermal energy, we can group all kinds of energy into either potential energy or kinetic energy. So the symbols in your textbook and that we use in this course for potential energy, it's a big E with a subscripted P, and for kinetic, it is a big E with the subscripted K. Sometimes I also just write, and you'll see in other places, just PE for potential energy or KE for kinetic energy. Same thing, these ones that I have equal to here. So kinetic energy, what are we talking about? It is the energy of motion. Yes, so absolutely you need to know that. All kinds of motion when you're walking, that is kinetic energy. When you're throwing a ball, when you're driving a plane that's flying, something that's dropping, all of those are different kinds of motion because there is some movement. So that is the key is there does need to be some sort of movement. So energy is equal to the amount of work required to put it into motion. So if something is not in motion, it's a rest, in order to get it to move, you need to put some work into it in order to get that motion. So EK or KE is determined by mass 
and velocity. And of course, we've seen these before with other calculations. Symbol for mass, SM, units are kg for velocity. And again, I'll just use it sort of interchangeably with speed. So for speed, it's the non-vector, and it's the change in distance over the change in time. For velocity, it is the vector. It's still a v, but now it's the displacement, which is a vector divided by the change in time. All right, so that we already know the variables, the name, and the units for those. So the equation that we're going to use here, again, directly from your data sheet, you don't need to memorize any of this. This is the equation that we have right here. Yes, you may need to rearrange it, and we're going to see that, and what they do represent. So the kinetic energy, the mass, and the velocity. This one can be a little bit complicated for rearranging in some of the calculations because we do have a squared number here. And sometimes what you need to do is, well, kind of the opposite of squaring something, which is taking the uh, square root. So you'll need to know how to use that on your calculator. So EK, one half mv squared, one half mass times the velocity, squaring the velocity. Uh, units, kilograms, meters per second, squaring both of those. So that ends up being meter squared and second squared. And that works out to kilograms times meter squared per second squared, which, of course, we've already seen. And that is energy, and that is joules. They are equivalent. So let's take a look at our uh, first example that we do have here. Grasp is given information, required information, Analysis, really the formula. Solving it, plugging the numbers again, getting the answer, and yeah, sometimes, I guess, giving me a sentence, kind of summarizing what you did get for your result. <clears throat> so let's write down what we do have here. Let's start with our given information. Those are the numbers that we do have. So we're given 300 G, GR grams. So we are given a mass. 300 grams. I recommend you do this right away. Realize that we don't want grams, we want kilograms. So how do we convert this um, into kilograms? Well, I'll give you the, the long way to do it right now. If we want to get rid of the grams, it's all like that is all in the numerator. We want to multiply by something where grams are in the denominator, so they cancel out. And what we do want is kilograms. One kilogram, there are 1,000 grams, so we're just going to take 300 divided by 1,000, and that equals 0 0.300. Zero, zero kilograms that we do have. Okay, notice that I kept all the digits here in terms of significant digits, so this would be the most precise answer out of these two, and this one here is three significant digits. The leading zero is not significant, but these two after the three, those are significant. So this one has three sig digs. However, this one here is less precise. Two sig digs, two sig digs, trailing zero is significant, and that's what we will go by for our final answer. At any rate, what this is, meters per second, again, if you don't remember, just take a look at your data sheet. Those are the units for speed or velocity. Again, if it were velocity, there would be a direction associated with this, so I will just write it as speed rather than velocity. 30 meters per second. What are we asked to calculate? Our required information, well, that is the kinetic energy, question mark. That's what we're trying to find. Go to your data sheet, find the formula. There is no memorizing here. EK is equal to, now I'm just going to write this a little bit different. So it is uh, one half mv squared, but I'm going to write it as mv squared divided by 2, just so it's a little bit easier to kind of visualize what we're doing for the calculation. You can multiply by half or 0.5 if you like, but sometimes it's easier if we see it this way. There's no rearranging of the equation this time. It's just plugging the numbers straight in. So remember, for all the calculations, give me all the digits and all throughout. Remember, I look for units. So given information, I want to see the units. When you plug the numbers into your equation, I want to see the units. Oops, I put joules up here. 
that should be grams of course for that and our uh, speed or velocity squared 30 meters per second so squared it is the 30 that is squared the meters that squared and the seconds that are squared so if you actually plug the 30 squared into your calculator it does work to 900 so some students are more comfortable squaring that first and then multiplying it by uh, the 0 0.3 you should eventually get comfortable putting this in one long chain in your calculator and using brackets just like I am using brackets here as well. So when we do go ahead and plug this in, you end up with 135 joules, but we want it to two significant digits, right? This has two sig digs. Our final answer does need to be rounded to two sig digs. So how do I turn this into a two sig dig answer when it's three right now? Right now the decimal is here. I'm going to shift it over one, two. Now the answer becomes one point, and I'm going to round up the three because the five is, well, five or greater. So I round up the three to a four. In this case here, and uh, then it's going to be times 10 to the number of places that I move the decimal. Okay, so 1.4 times 10 to the 2 joules is going to be our answer. And again, I have two digits because of this number right here, which has two significant digits in it. All right, so just a reminder what I'm looking for in terms of you showing your work consistent all along in terms of what I want to see. Uh, so grasp, given in required information, that's what you're telling me right here. Okay, if you need to do the conversion, just do it right away. So I want to see that, you're getting marks for that. You don't give me the units, I take half a mark off. Your analysis is your equation from the data sheet. Sometimes you need to rearrange it, this time you don't. Your solving is taking all the numbers, plugging them in with the units. I need to see that. And finally, giving me your answer at the end to the correct number of significant digits and showing the units for that as well, which could be kilograms times meters per second squared or simply joules because they are one in the same thing. Okay, let's take a look at another one here. So in this case, we will need to rearrange the equation. This one is a little bit more involved in terms of rearranging and um, the calculations that you do need to do. So here, we are actually given EK, and we're told what that number is. So we're given the kinetic energy, and it is equal to 100 joules, or if you want to write this as the full thing, kilograms times meter squared per second squared, you can of course do that as well. We also have a mass that we're given here. It is in kilograms, so we don't need to do any sort of conversion. Uh, the least precise number is actually the 100, so our final answer then should uh, actually be to three sig digs. And we also need our velocity eventually. In fact, that's what we're asked for, is calculating the velocity. Velocity or the speed. So here it does say velocity, although no direction is really given for the basketball. So in reality, um, speed might be a better term to use rather than velocity. At any rate, that is what we are trying to figure out. So go to your data sheet, find your equation. Equation is this, EK is equal to one half mv squared, but we want this. So we need to rearrange this equation, well, not just for velocity squared, but actually for velocity. So how do we go ahead and do this? Well, everything else except for velocity needs to go to the other side. So here, if I take this and if I multiply this side by two, I get rid of the two in the denominator, but then I need to do the same to the other side. Multiply the k by two. If I want to get rid of the mass, I need to divide by mass, and then I do the same to the other side. 
Okay, I'm just going to rewrite this. I'm going to shift the v squared over to the other side. I still need to get rid of the square, and it's equal to 2 times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. So now I do need to get rid of the square. How do I do that? I take the square root. If I take the square root on the left, I need to take the square root on the right. So now on the left, I do get V. And on the right, this is what I need to plug in. So I have 2 times our kinetic energy, which is the 100 joules. Dividing by the mass, 2.0 kg. And then in the end, we're going to take the square root of that. I'm just going to show this as well. So remember that joules are kilograms times meter squared divided by second squared. And then in the denominator, we have kilograms. So just to show that, yes, this does all eventually work out in terms of the units, we are looking for a velocity, and velocity should be meters per second. So we better end up with meters per second here. So um, do we actually end up with that, with what we are looking for in here? Well, the kilograms are going to cancel out, and then we're going to take the square root of it. So because we take the square root of it, we get rid of these squares. What are we left with? Meters per second. That is what we want. So all of this is right the way that it was rearranged. And that's why it's always nice to have the units. Double check with the units just in case you do something wrong with your rearranging of this equation. So when you do plug all of this in, um, it does work out to a nice even 10 uh, meters per second. But of course, we want three significant digits because the least precise number that we're originally given has three so we would write this as 10.0 meters per second so again the other lesson will be on potential energy so we'll stop it there for this one